Hello everyone. Today's topic is viscosity. It is a property of the fluid. Now, first of all, we need to know what fluid is. Any matter can exist in only two states. One is solid and another is fluid. The difference between the two is quite obvious, but if we put it into words, a solid can resist a shear stress by a static deflection, but a fluid cannot. Any shear stress applied to a fluid will result in motion of that fluid, irrespective of the magnitude of that shear stress. The fluid deforms and moves continuously as long as the shear stress is applied. Hence, fluid at rest means it is in a state of zero shear stress. Again, the fluid can be classified as liquid and gas. In liquid, the cohesive forces are strong between the closely packed molecules, which tends to retain its volume and if unconfined from above, it will form a free surface in a gravitational field. On the other hand, the cohesive forces are negligible in a gas due to the widely spaced molecules. Therefore, it has no definite volume and is free to expand until it finds a confining world. Now, besides the primary thermodynamic properties like pressure, temperature, density, etc., there are certain secondary variables which have influences on the mechanical behavior of that fluid. One of the most important properties is the viscosity. It is defined as the property of a fluid which offers resistance to the movement of one layer of fluid over another adjacent layer. More specifically, it determines the fluid strain rate generated by a given applied shear stress. Consider a fluid element sheared in one plane by a shear stress tau. With respect to the lower surface, the upper surface is moving at a velocity of delta u. Okay. The shear strain angle delta theta will grow continuously with time as long as the shear stress is maintained. For common fluids, the shear stress and the strain rate follows a linear relationship between them. Hence, the shear stress tau is proportional to the shear strain rate which is delta theta divided by delta t. From geometry, we can see that this distance is delta u into delta t. Okay, now tan delta theta from this figure you can see that it is equals to delta u delta t divided by delta y. For small values of delta theta tan delta theta equals to delta theta. Therefore, delta theta equals to delta u into delta t divided by delta y or delta theta divided by delta t equals to delta u divided by delta y. In the limit of infinitesimal changes, this becomes a relation between the shear strain rate and the velocity gradient, which is d theta dt equals to du dy. Hence, we can say that the shear stress is directly proportional to the velocity gradient. Shear stress tau is proportional to du dy. Therefore, tau equals to mu du dy. 
where mu is the constant of proportionality which is called the coefficient of dynamic viscosity or simply the viscosity. This expression is known as the Newton's law of viscosity. Hence, Newton's law of viscosity states that the shear stress on a fluid element layer is directly proportional to the rate of shear strain and the constant of proportionality is called the coefficient of viscosity. Fluids which obey the relation are known as Newtonian fluids and which do not obey this linear law are called the non-Newtonian fluids. From the graph, we can see that the fluid having a linear relationship between the shear stress and the rate of shear strain is the Newtonian fluid. Examples are water, oil and air. All those having a nonlinear relation are non-Newtonian fluids. Out of these, the latent fluid is shear thickening. It increases its resistance with increasing strain rate. Examples are sand in water. Now the pseudoplastic fluid is shear thinning and it is less resistant at higher strain rate. Examples are paper pulp in water, blood plasma, syrup, latex paint. A very strong thinning is called plastic. Now the limiting case of a plastic substance is the ideal Bingham plastic. It requires a finite yield stress before it begins to flow. The yielding is followed by either linear or nonlinear behavior. We have seen that tau equals to mu du dy. Hence, mu equals to tau divided by du dy. The dimension of tau, that is stress, the shear stress, is force per length square. And the dimension of the velocity is length divided by time. And dy is the dimension of length. So, the dimension of viscosity becomes force into time divided by length square. The force can further be written as mass into distance divided by time square. Hence, the dimension of viscosity which is force into time by distance square can also be written as m l that is mass into length divided by time square into time divided by length square. Finally, it will come to mass divided by L D. Hence, the dimension of viscosity can either be written as force into time divided by length square or mass divided by length into time. So what we have just seen, the dimension of viscosity is force multiplied by time divided by length square. Accordingly, the unit of viscosity in SI unit will be Newton second per meter square or kg per meter second. In CGS, it will be dyne second per centimeter square, which is also known as poise. Now the conversion formula is as shown now. One poise is 10 to the power minus 1 Newton second per meter square 
and 1 centipoise is 10 to the power minus 3 newton second per meter square. So far in this video we have discussed regarding dynamic viscosity. In fact by the word only viscosity we mean dynamic viscosity only. Now kinematic viscosity is the ratio between the dynamic viscosity and density of the fluid. Mathematically, it can be written as nu equals to mu by rho, where nu is the kinematic viscosity, mu is the dynamic viscosity, and rho is the density of that fluid. Mathematically, the kinematic viscosity nu equals to dynamic viscosity mu divided by density rho. Now the dimension of dynamic viscosity is mass divided by length into time as we have just seen and the dimension of the density is mass divided by length cube so it will come to length square divided by time it is the dimension of kinematic viscosity as seen the dimension of kinematic viscosity is length square divided by time accordingly the unit of kinematic viscosity in SI is meter square per second and in CGS it will be centimeter square per second which is also known as Stokes. Now the conversion formula is as shown now. One stroke equals to 10 to the power minus 4 meter square per second and one centi stroke equals to 10 to the power minus 6 meter square per second. Now we will discuss regarding the variation of viscosity with temperature. Viscosity depends on the cohesive forces and molecular momentum transfer. In liquid, the cohesive forces predominate the molecular momentum transfer. And with the increase in temperature, cohesive forces decrease resulting in a decrease in viscosity. On the other hand, in case of gas, the molecular momentum transfer predominates and with the increase in temperature the molecular momentum transfer increases resulting in an increase in the viscosity. The empirical formula with respect to the variation of viscosity with temperature for both the liquid and gases are as shown. There are several experimental methods of determination of viscosity. Those are capillary tube method, falling sphere resistance method, rotating cylinder method, orifice type viscometer. These will be elaborated when we will come up with the lecture on the viscous flow. There also we will discuss regarding the application of viscosity. See you soon with the new topic.